Hey guys, Mr. Johnson here. And while getting used to this new computer has obviously had an impact on things, a lot of things have happened at the same time and it has impacted my ability to run this channel. Fortunately, what does not change is my love for music and we have some music here. So we've done this before, a song from the Hot 100, a song from Beatport, and a song from my subscription feed. Let's go. God, I'm already sad. So far, pretty to run the mill of synth pop. Yeah, nothing inspiring lyrically so far, quite frankly, musically either. Not, not a lot of ambition, I guess, would be the way to put it. Sometimes simplicity works, this is not one of those times. I guess it's two lovers who feel like they were hurting their, their significant other. So you know, it's kind of like, don't pity me. Save your tears for another day. Wish I could have time back from that song, but here we are. Having mostly experienced The weekend through his singles, I do respect his work, but it's not like I've gone out to, to seek it. Uh, it. It just doesn't interest me. I still think he can write better music than that. It, it honestly makes me wonder how this got to the top 100, you know. Because I know better at this point not to make music a fully cerebral experience looking for the top tier in artistry. You know, sometimes you have to sit back and just chill and listen to the song and, and just not think too much. At the same time, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, what is there to enjoy about that song? Yeah, I'm honestly lost for words right now, but I would not recommend that song. There, there's just nothing inspiring about it. <sighs> the next song is going to be Glow Vibes and Lana Parilla. It's over now, and it's going to be the radio version. A little bit of cowbell in there, so fans of the Blue Oyster Cult will be very pleased. And fans of Will Ferrell. I just kind of dated myself, didn't I? And me, in my very specific niche terminology, mono bass line, mono chord structure. Let's see where this goes. It's a nice little mid-frequency pad they have going on there, laying down some chords. And some strings. Still pretty mono, though. So far, we're zero for two with B-port songs. Let's see if uh, we can get to one out of three. Oh, there we go. All right, the bass line's changing, the chords are changing. N nothing complicated, but it, I mean, it, it's lovely. It, it's very disco-esque. Oof. Yeah, it, it cuts out any cymbals or shakers. Just straight kick and clap or snare, and it's used very well for this point in the song. Piano, I'm a sucker for piano and house music. I'm sure a lot of people are. All right, it's a good breakdown. Let's see what it happens when the uh, drum kits come back in. I love it. So much soul. Do not disappoint me, please. All right, we're gonna build up now. Chords are different. Come on, do me good, do me good. Oh, no. You know what? I'm pausing. There's no need to keep on listening. He fell into the EDM trap. Verdict is, no, don't bother listening to this song. Last week we were one for three. Right now we are zero for two. The subscription song I picked is from Defected Records. It is a record company that I trust. They always seem to have high quality house songs, but they are a high quality house record and I'm hoping they have high quality house for us as we listen to this track. This is originally by Horse Me Disco and we have a remix by Moose T. And since we're talking about Moose T, since we're talking about uh, defective records, might as well plug Moose T's remix of Testify by Davey. It is a guilty pleasure of mine. It is a smooth, silky house song. If you're a sucker for saxophone, you'll enjoy it for that reason as well. But definitely recommend uh, Moose T's remix of Testify by Davey. Go for it, listen to it, jam, dance. I can't remember the name of that synthesizer, the style of it. It sounds like a sawtooth that's been filtered well. But, but really old school funk. Love that bass line. Love the guitar work. It's just dripping. I like the little twist on the meter there. I'm sure there's a proper musical terminology for it, but it's not coming to me right now. 
I like it. It's good. And that's all that matters, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. It's, it's not bad so far. I just get the feeling whenever the chorus hits, there can be some increased vocal intensity. Maybe make it louder. Add unison male vocals to thicken that texture a little bit. You know, bring a sense of arrival is probably, probably the term I'm trying to use right now. A little bit of disco and post-disco put together. These synthesizers, I feel like are post-disco. The guitar work I'm hearing, the orchestra strings that I'm hearing, definitely disco territory. You know, lately I've been doing some research on di disco and boogie. Excuse me, disco and boogie. And it's, it's amazing how much overlap those two genres have. Again, like the guitar work. I know this phasing involved might, might, might even be flanging involved. Yeah, not bad so far. You saw me shrug my shoulders on camera, and that's pretty much how I feel about the song so far. So was it good? Yes. Was it anything special? Would it be something that I reach out to buy immediately on Beatport? Not necessarily. So... Okay, so gotta admit, uh, not as much luck this week in terms of, you know, absolute bangers that I would absolutely throw out and recommend. That's music sometimes, and, you know, I've, I've got to figure out what makes a song engaging versus not as engaging. I've got to um, and figure out how these producers, these artists can do better. Because they can do better. Uh, the Weeknd can definitely do better. Glow Vibes can definitely do better. And then um, Horse Me Disco and Moose T... Both producers who I respect, I feel like they can do better as well. Let's figure out what needs to be done. Let's create better music together. Let's listen to better music together. Let's keep up the expectations on these producers and musicians. And with that, this is Cool Guy Johnson. Peace.